I love that blue box in your textbook that starts off every chapter, especially the second and third segments that sums up everything that you need to know about the particular lesson. So if you have your textbook, that one is something that you really need to go through and understand. The Slave's Dream, written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, is made up of eight short stanzas, beautifully crafted and emotionally moving anti-slavery poetry. It brings out the important image of an African king who was taken as a slave. Beside the ungathered rice he lay, his sickle in his hand, his breast was bare, his matted hair was buried in the sand. Again in the mist and shadow of sleep, he saw his native land. White through the landscape of his dream, the lordly Niger flowed beneath the palm trees and the plain. Once more a king he strode and heard the tinkling caravan descend the mountain road. He saw once more his dark-eyed queen among his children stand. They clasped his neck, they kissed his cheeks and held him by the hand. A tear burst from the slipper's lids and fell into the sand. And then at furious speed he rode along the Niger's bank. His bridle reins were golden chains and with the martial clank. At each leap he could feel the scabbard of steel smiting his stallion's flank. Before him like a red flag the bright flamingos flew. From morn till night he followed their flight O'er plains where the tamarind grew Till he saw the roofs of the kafir huts And the ocean rose to view At night he heard the lion roar and the hyena scream And the river hoarse as he crushed the reeds Beside some hidden stream And it passed like a glorious roll of drums Through the triumph of his dream the forest with their myriad tongues shouted of liberty and the blast of the desert cried aloud with a voice so wild and free that he started in his sleep and smiled at their tempestuous glee. He did not feel the driver's whip nor the burning heat of the day for death had illumined the land of sleep and his lifeless body lay a worn-out fetter that the soul had broken and thrown away the slave who was once upon a time a king now lay dying in a field beside the ungathered rice with his sickle the important things that you need to know about the stanzas as you go through that beautiful poem the first stanza talks about the physical, his physical existence in the physical world. Second stanza talks about him reliving the past life of a king. In the third stanza, he remembers his queen and his children, that is his family. Fourth stanza, the poet talks about the slave's restlessness to rush his process of death so that he can be united with his family. Fifth stanza, talks about what he sees in his dream, the, his, the things that he see. In the sixth stanza, Henry Wordsworth Longfellow talks about the things that he hear, the beautiful sounds that he heard in his past life, he remembers in his dream. In the seventh stanza, he has received triumph and liberty, that is victory and freedom. In the eighth stanza, the slave is finally free from this physical world because death has given way for him to go into the afterlife and he leaves his physical body behind. In this poem, Henry Wordsworth Longfellow uh, tells about how death is the only way that a slave can earn his freedom. Now digging deeper into the poem, as a slave, he as a slave, he seems to be working in the field and suddenly falls asleep with his sickle still in his hand. He stopped gathering the rice 
He laid down there with no clothes and his hair covered in sand. And as he fell asleep, he saw his native land in his dream. He dreamt of the lordly Niger. The lordly Niger. Sounds like he's speaking about a person, but he is not. He's speaking about the Niger River in the Western Africa. Talking about that river as though he were talking about a person is the technique of personification. So the lordly Niger flowed under the palm trees in the plain. In his dream, once again he became the king. No longer a slave, now he heard of the caravans tinkling and running down through the mountain road. And as he continued to dream, he saw his wife and his children. They were also happy to see him. They embraced him happily and kissed him on the cheek and held him by the hand. The slave was so happy in his sleep that he that his tears fell from his eyelids and fell on the sand. This vision, this image in his dream made him miss his family and miss his native land so much that he just wanted to hurry the process of death. He rode along the Niger bank. His bridal reins were golden chains and he whipped his horse with all his might so that the horse would run faster. He saw the bright colored flamingos flying above him right like a red flag comparing bright flamingos to red flag this technique used by henry wadsworth is called metaphor comparing two very unlikely things by a poet red symbolizes energy power and strength so the flamingos symbolized energy freedom beside the bright colored flamingos he also saw the huts of the kaffirs the huts of his local people he also saw the ocean the wide ocean rose to view he was finally in a free open space in the next stanza you will find that Henry talks about what the what the slave heard the beautiful the beautiful sound of the roaring lion the screaming of the hyena and the galloping of the river horse and the sound of the galloping horse sounded in his ears like like the sound of glorious drum rolls galloping of horses being compared to glorious sound of drums this is another metaphor remember that seven stanza talks about freedom and victory the forest in his dream seemed to shout out liberty or freedom now we know that forest cannot literally talk they don't have mouth so only a person can have a mouth and a forest is not a person but the poet here says that the forest shouted out of liberty that is personification of forest blast of the desert cried out with a voice so wild and free same here deserts cannot literally have a voice but the poet here says that the blast of the desert was a voice of was of what was a voice so wild and free this is another personification personification of desert so in the stanza the forest and the desert seem to greet him and welcome him into the new world of freedom and victory longing for freedom for such a long time as long as he was a slave the slave smiled in his sleep the last stanza talks about his mortal body saying that as he was sleeping and very near to death the one in charge of the slaves working in the field came and whipped him with his whip with his whip but he could not feel the pain anymore he could not even feel the scorching heat of the sun because finally he is dead death has opened his way to the new world that is free from pain and discomfort his lifeless body lie there with its metal chains around his legs that were made for slaves his soul was now free from slavery and bondage with that he had earned his victory and he has earned his freedom 
that was your beautiful, beautiful poem, The Slave's Dream by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Remember the details of your poem. Remember the personification and metaphors. Simple yet deep. Well, see you in the next video.